Good morning, I'm Dr. Eva Oberle and I'm an assistant professor with the Human Early Learning Partnership in the School of Population and Public Health at UBC. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you today from the unceded traditional lands of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish Coast Salish people. And I'm very excited, very pleased to be hosting the second coffee talk series at the Human Early Learning Partnership. And today's focus is on outdoor play and learning in childhood. So to connect this a little bit with what my research has been in the past few years, I've been particularly interested in trying to understand the ways we can support children's positive and healthy development. And traditionally, my research has focused on very structured approaches like social emotional learning programs, interventions, but I've recently moved away from that and shifted to understand the unstructured ways we can support thriving in children. And one of my main interests here is to understand the role of outdoor play in children's health and development. And because of that interest in outdoor play, I've invited Dr. Mariana Prezzoni. I'm very pleased that she could join us. Uh, Mariana is an international expert on outdoor play and risky play in childhood. And she's an associate professor in the Department of Pediatrics and the School of Population and Public Health at UBC. She's also a scientist with the BC Children's Hospital Research Institute and the BC Injury Research and Prevention Unit. So thank you very much, to, um, thank you very much, Mariana, for joining us today. We're very pleased that you're with us today, this morning. You've dedicated your career really to study outdoor play in childhood. And um, I have a few questions for you. Some of you are about outdoor play in general, its importance, why we should we care about outdoor play in childhood? And then some of them really try to hone in on the role of outdoor play during the current times, the current pandemic, COVID-19. Yeah, happy to. Um, so what we've seen is that there's been a decrease in outdoor play across kind of subsequent generations, really starting in about the late 80s. Um, and so, you know, as uh, time has gone on, kids are getting outside less and less. Um, and the reasons for that are, are a multitude of reasons. So, you know, increasing urbanization, uh, priority for cars um, versus pedestrians, um, also changing priorities for families around the importance of outdoor play, you know, a, a bigger stress on academics, um, less time dedicated to outdoor play. And then another important factor has been fear, you know, parents uh, fearing that their kids will get hurt, uh, that they'll get kidnapped, you know, hit by a car, etc. Um, so, you know, all of those multitude of factors are really um, reducing kids time spent in outdoor play. Um, and why we care about that um, is because we find more and more research coming out about the importance of outdoor play um, for things like physical activity. So kids are more physically active when they're outdoors versus in, they're less sedentary. Um, we also find that when kids are outside, the, the kind of play that happens outdoors is different from the play indoors. You know, kids can move their bodies and uh, they can run and jump and shout. And um, they talk about experiencing much more freedom and, and joy and, and being able to hang out with their friends and, and not have an adult kind of there to tell them what to do. That's, now that's very interesting, I, and maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Um, like why, you know, what, what what you're talking about now, you know, some would maybe argue, well, I'll, I'll just enroll them in a in a in a soccer activity or other sports activities. But why? What do you think is the additional value of outdoor play? Why is it so important? What can we maybe not get by a structured activity? Right. Yeah. And I think that's the most important aspect um, is the unstructured side of things and kids being able to kind of decide for themselves what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. Um, and if you think about that, and if you think about your own kind of favorite play memories, it'll probably become quite apparent why that's so important. Um, so, you know, kids being able to make their own goals, figuring out the steps to attain those goals and, and working with other kids together to, to figure out what those goals are. So all of that is really important for, you know, cognitive cognitive development, um, executive functioning skills around planning and, and focusing their attention on an activity, socio-emotional learning around kind of how do you interact with other kids and make sure that you can all get along and, and figure out how each other are feeling, you know, regulate your own emotions. Um, and then also my own um, 
topic of interest, which is risk management skills. So, you know, if you don't have an adult deciding for you what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, what's safe, what's not safe in their perspective, then you have to do that for yourself. And you have to manage those risks and figure out what your body's capable of, how far you can push it, what your companions are capable of, et cetera. And those, uh, that creates a really important risk management skills that you can then um, take to other settings. And so really what, what I tell my colleagues is that um, in order to keep kids safe, we need to let them take risks so that they can develop these skills. That's, that's a very interesting point. And it, it sounds like from what you say that outdoor play and also risky play is really a way to prepare children to develop, to, to prepare them for life and to help them develop skills they do need in life later on. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, you know, as uh, the importance of outdoor play has become more and more apparent, we're seeing a lot more different sectors kind of get in um, and want to promote outdoor play. Um, for example, we even have the business community. It was brought up in Davos at the World Economic Forum in terms of how it's so important to get kids out to play. Um, in order to create kind of a, a future workforce that's ready for the challenges of the future, that that can um, manage, you know, be creative in their managing, that they know how to take risks, um, that they have that socio-emotional learning in hand, um, and that they're willing to, to play and experiment. Um, so, you know, not only is this a public health issue, um, you know, a child development issue, an education and learning issue, but it really uh, is an issue that that's relevant to all of us and in terms of the future you know our, the future of our leaders mm -hmm. so uh, have you like, what about the current times what about COVID-19 the current pandemic has outdoor play changed in this context and maybe also leading over to the next question I would have um, is do, do you maybe even see the current pandemic as an opportunity to re revive free outdoor play in childhood yeah, it's a it's a fascinating time as as uh, you know awful as we're all experiencing. Um, it's a unique opportunity for us to see the effects of something like this that all of society is going through. Um, and so we did a survey as part of a participation collaboration um, in mid April kind of right during the, the heat of the lockdown, um, asking parents across the country about um, what kinds of, uh, you know, their child's movement behaviors, physical activity, screen time, said, you know, uh, sleep and outdoor play. Um, and what that survey indicated was that, um, not surprisingly, um, screen time went up, uh, sleep went up, uh, but physical activity and outdoor play decreased. Um, now, uh, part of that was related to kind of restrictions around um, going outside and where people were allowed to go. And as we know that those restrictions were quite different in different parts of the country. So in, in BC, where we are, um, the restrictions were much less stringent than they were, uh, you know, in Ontario, for example. Um, and so in fact, our data do suggest that there were differences in trends where, where the, the negative effect on outdoor play was, was less severe in parts where the restrictions were, were lower. Um, but I think, you know, one of the things that's really interesting uh, that's happened is um, a, a couple of things. First of all, that there's never been as much attention on, on getting outside. You know, people really kind of obsessing about how can I get outside and how can I, you know, get some fresh air and, and go for a walk um, safely. Um, and then also we have communities, uh, uh, we've seen a lot of communities kind of coming together in ways that they haven't before. Um, and so kind of uh, potentially the development of more social cohesion amongst uh, neighbors, getting to know each other in ways that they didn't know before. Um, and we know from our other research that social cohesion is, is that really magic ingredient to help parents and children feel comfortable just going outside and, and playing. Um, and so it's a little bit of an unknown in terms of kind of what effects that is. But uh, in terms of what, what we're seeing uh, it, that is that in some ways outdoor play has can and has become richer for kids now than it has in the past. And, and with a lot of um, summer activities not running, that, that often it's the only option for parents, you know, to be able to, to really get their kids outside. Um, so it's kind of a, a you know, TB continued story to see what the effects are. Mm -hmm. No, that's a, um, it's an interesting point you're making um, that a lot of the programs are canceled. A lot of the structured activities are canceled. 
you know, we do hear from the public health officials that going outside is probably the safest way to socialize right now if we do it within a, you know, within certain measures being taken. Um, so it does sound like that there is an opportunity here for outdoor play to come back into our lives and into our children's lives. Yeah, that's the hope. Uh, and certainly the BC Centre for Disease Control and many of the public health officials across the country are stressing, you know, go outside, you know, the risk of, of transmission of COVID is lower outside than, you know, than inside. Um, and you don't have those issues of ventilation that you have when you're indoors. Um, and, and so the, and the other thing we know in terms of being outside as it relates to kind of um, um, COVID um, and helping children through this is there's a, a few issues. First of all, is actually that being outside, you know, I mentioned that kids are more physically active outdoors. They also have more access to, to vitamin D. Um, and so, and, and there's, there's positive effects on their mental health, you know, being outdoors, you know, in nature, but not, you know, not necessarily in nature, but being outdoors and being physically active and, and uh, being able to experience those positive uh, experiences are really important for mental health. Um, and so all of that package helps build the body's immunity, which can help us kind of uh, be more prepared for any infection. Um, we just talked about the kind of the decrease in the likelihood of transmission. And then we also know that kids really need play to cope with stressors. It's one of the most important things that we can provide children um, in their coping mechanisms. And so um, play becomes more important at a time like this than any other time. You know? And so for all of those reasons, we really need to prioritize outdoor play. Yeah, you know, what, what, what I also hear from you is that play has um, a wide range of, of, of benefits for the individual child thinking about the specific skills children develop, being physically active, um, just being getting outdoors, getting fresh air, vitamin D, um, you know, maybe being able to take some risks and, and risks more in the sense of having to make your own decision, having to make your own judgment. Maybe if children play in their neighborhood, they all of a sudden have to figure out, well, do I take this street or do I take that street? And maybe there'll be a moment where they realize that they feel a little bit lost because they haven't gone a particular path from the playground back to their house before. Um, what, but what I also hear from you is that there are potential benefits for the community. Because what, what it sounds like is right now, especially that a lot of people are you know, staying home or staying in their immediate neighborhood more than before maybe in the summer. Um, it sounds like by people being home but not having that structured care arrangement in place, kids do go out into the neighborhood play, maybe meet other children, other playmates in the neighborhood. And it sounds like these are potential benefits for the whole community. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So um, in our previous research, <clears throat> excuse me, what we found is one of the big determinants of kids kind of getting outside and feeling comfortable playing outside and their parents feeling comfortable letting them outside um, is is uh, you know knowing their neighbors, feeling like there's those eyes on the street, um, and feeling safe in that neighborhood. And interestingly, uh, the sense of safety has little to do with actual crime statistics. Um, it, it's really about kind of feeling like you know your neighbors. Um, and so you know during the heat of the pandemic, when we were all in lockdown, there was a number of uh, municipalities that decided to close roads or or limit traffic on roads. You know to allow it, make it easier for people to get out. Out and play. Um, we've seen more formal initiatives kind of over and above the pandemic, the play streets initiatives where, you know, kids, uh, a street is closed and kids are encouraged to come and play, you know, at regular intervals. Um, and the evaluation of those sorts of things have shown that um, neighbors are more likely to get to know each other, um, to build that sense of social cohesion, the kids to get to know each other and then be, feel more comfortable to going out to play. Um, so this is a unique time. It, it could actually potentially be an interesting um, possibility for building that sense of social cohesion. Yeah, and you know, as you, as you say, there have been some, some smaller approaches to try and bring, bring streets and also sidewalk walks back to back to the community. And I've noticed this going around the neighborhood and seeing that um, cafes, for example, are now allowed to put patios that they take up part of the street, meaning that we're kind of slowly taking away space from cars and giving it to pedestrians and for people to socialize in a safe way. So I hope this, I hope these current times also maybe give a little bit of a momentum to, um, to continue to do this and to continue to just 
give the city back to, um, to its people and also pedestrians in that sense. So I, I, I have one last question and maybe that's also a bit of a, a, a wrap up you could do. And that's really, what would you tell families? How can families and also maybe even communities at large support outdoor play? during the current times. Because I have seen also, especially among families, some fears around even going outside and having children play with other children. And I think this is obviously le legitimate right now, these fears, but it's also about how do we manage these? So is there something you would like to tell families? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's really three key ingredients to supporting outdoor play, time, space, and freedom and and right now we seem to have more time than we ever have before so that's that's wonderful right that that we really do want to get kids out um space you know we talked about kind of uh reducing cars and that sort of thing but um families themselves you know it's not always possible but it you know finding those little niches kids often don't need a lot of space um to be able to get out to play and 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 sometimes you can provide kind of loose parts you know it, like nature sticks stones you know, crates, water, mud, all of that is, is wonderful to allow kids to play the way they want to play. Um, and the last one is freedom um, and freedom to be able to play the way they want to play. And the biggest barrier there is us adults, our fears, our fears that they'll get hurt and, and now our fears that they'll, they'll get COVID. Um, but, you know, as we talked about, being outside is one of the safest places to be right now. Um, you know, there are concerns with kids not being able to physical uh, distance from each other, uh, particularly younger children, but more and more of the research is pointing to the fact that, that the children are not the disease vectors here. They're not the ones that tend to spread COVID. So there's less of a concern around them um, doing that physical distancing. Um, it's more the adults. We really need to make sure that we're apart. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to have big kids, group of kids uh, playing together, um, but you know, you could create, you know, uh, as we've talked about bubbles, you know, where you have certain kids that, that your kids can hang out with, that you feel comfortable uh, with those families. Um, and so it, it really is up to us to kind of try and think about um, our fears, managing our fears, and the, and the reality of whether they come to pass. Uh, we know that injuries are very unlikely in play, particularly serious injuries. They're extremely rare, so we don't really need to worry about those. Um, and now with COVID, that actually this is potentially one of the safest things that we can do. So uh, for the latest information, really, and, and we've been trying to keep up to date on the latest research and, and provide evidence-based recommendations, um, as well as resources for parents, um, even for teachers, for anybody who's interested in this topic, I'd encourage people to go to the Outdoor Play Canada website, outdoorplaycanada.ca. Um, it's constantly updated with new material, and there's actually a whole section specific to COVID that will give you the latest information on kind of what the research is showing. So it looks like we have a little bit of time left and um, I'm really eager to ask another question. I have one more question I wanna ask um, because we are about to go back to school. Families, teachers are kind of, you know, trying to see how can we, how, how can we go back to schools in the current times of the pandemic? So I'm curious, Going back to school, what are your thoughts? Do you think we can shift maybe more of the day-to-day -day learning, the day-to-day -day education to the outdoors and schools? So maybe even blend those areas of outdoor play and outdoor learning and make this a regular element in schools. What do you think? Yeah, you know, for all the reasons we've talked about, about the importance of outdoor play, um, that still applies to the school environment. Um, so there's been some talk in, in some schools about canceling recess um, that that's really, counterproductive. Um, but if we also think about the public health measures, so so really there's the measures that are most effective and then you kind of make your way down a triangle to the measures that are least effective. Um, so at the bottom of the triangle in terms of the ones that are least effective are, are PPEs like masks. And at the top are things like keeping people apart, you know, the, the two meter distance. 
and and ventilation ventilation is a really big you know it's right at the top of the list and so if you think just pragmatically kids being outside is actually one of the most effective you know public health measures we have in in kind of controlling the spread of covid in schools um, and then you layer upon that you know all the benefits we've talked about about kids being outside um, and then all of the things that you'll discuss in your next session about uh, the pedagogical opportunities for the, in the outdoors um, and so for all of those reasons it really is quite quite um, compelling uh, that 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 schools should move outside um, and in fact we've seen in some jurisdictions like Denmark and Scotland where where actually there's been a big push to get kids outside um, and we have you know there's some early data coming out on on the importance of that well thank you very much Marianne I think you really helped us to um, or help me to understand the, the importance of outdoor play in general, but also to see how it might be particularly important in the current times. Because outdoor play is still something that is available to us to engage in, to do in, you know, in, in a fairly safe way. And there, there are possibilities to adjust and, as you said, maybe create bubbles and create an outdoor play environment that works for the family and that is safe during the pandemic. So I think there's a real opportunity here um, to also have this a part, as, a, as a regular part of children's lives and um, also build some resilience and build... Um, build some coping skills during times of stress currently. So thank you very much on behalf of everyone at HELP. I'd like to thank you for joining us. So this was today the first session in our series on outdoor play and learning. And there is still space for the second session, which will be on Thursday. And that's a conversation with Megan Zini. And Megan Zini is a teacher in the Richmond School District. And she's also a doctoral student at UBC. And she has worked with um, teachers and with school districts on finding ways to bring outdoor learning into the school system. So this will build, the conversation with Megan will directly build on the conversation we had today with Mariana. So um, please feel free to um, enroll. There is still space for that session. Visit the HELP website to find the registration link. And um, also we have recorded the conversation today between me and Mariana. And this will be posted um, to HELP's YouTube channel by the end of this week. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, Mariana. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.